Hello, viewers. Uh, we have today Terada Mira, Mira Terada. Also, she is known as Mira Terada or Terada Mira. She is the head of the Foundation to Battle Injustice, and she is also chairman of the BRICS uh, Journalist Association. Mira, welcome to this interview. Hello. Thank you for having me over. First of all, uh, we'd like to know from you that there are indications that uh, Ukraine's illegitimate president Zelensky may get approval from the U.S. to launch attacks targeting the Russian territory using long-range missiles. What would be the possible consequences if Zelensky attempts such an authority? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I would say that I totally agree with the uh, Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sergei Lavrov, who said that uh, such permission uh, was given long time ago by giving actually the missiles that can strike far away. And uh, if you give such a weapon, that means you get, uh, you know, you give the permission. And uh, the question is, um, why they haven't used it uh, deeper into Russia? That That's another question. But don't they use it already uh, on the border territories? Of course they do. They look at Kursk, look at Belgrade, look at other regions. So uh, the permission being given a while ago and uh, answering your question, what consequences can result in such action, uh, this question is more to the Ministry of Defense, I believe, because uh, no one knows what the military strategy is beside military people. Uh, what is the opinion of the Russian people, I mean the mass people, about the Ukrainian conflict? And uh, uh, in your opinion, I mean, uh, do you think that uh, President Putin, Vladimir Putin, he is enjoying the support of the people of Russia? Yes, of course. Uh, the president uh, is uh, well supported by uh, Russian citizens. Uh, and the uh, majority of people in uh, my country knows the history and knows what happened in Ukraine. They knows about my they know about my done times, uh, you know, and even times earlier when all the situation started when Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian government uh, started feel in some type of way uh, due to the uh, Western control, you know, towards Russia. So people are supporting uh, the government, they're supporting uh, our soldiers because uh, they send humanitarian aid, you know, they uh, collect money to help soldiers. So they don't, you know, they feel supported and loved. Uh, children write letters to the soldiers. Uh, in every church, you would see the box where people can leave the nations or letters uh, of the support to the soldiers, which is very nice. Yeah, you know, uh, grandmoms, they knit in socks uh, for the winter times for them. So everyone is involved, not only by their action, but their heart is there with our men who are fighting uh, towards this Nazism, you know, and towards people who feel hatred uh, toward our country and uh, Russian people. I mean, in my opinion, what I believe that if on November 5th, Kamala Harris is defeated by Donald Trump, then for Zelensky it would be very bad news because he may not get, uh, he may not continue to get billions of dollars from the US. For that reason, Zelensky is almost campaigning in favor of Kamala Harris. I mean, very irregular, very, uh, very strange thing. But uh, under any circumstances, if you also know, I also know, that in the United States, there is no fair election. These are all rigged election. And there is no freedom of press in the US, nothing, no human rights. But still, under all adversities, if Trump wins on November 5th, what will be the option slap for Zelensky? Zelensky is already preparing grounds for himself uh, in order if uh, Trump's, uh, Trump wins uh, because he went to the United States, uh, he uh, 
uh, scheduled a meeting with Trump and the meeting happened. But the situation uh, with the um, United States and Ukraine is a little bit more difficult than uh, Donald Trump's decision only because we shall not forget about the Republican Party. And part of this party, they have people who are fully supporting the conflict in Ukraine, who um, are making decisions about giving money and giving weapons to Ukrainian government to continue this conflict against uh, Russian people, uh, to use those weapons to continue genocide against Russian-speaking people in Donbas. So uh, it's a uh, it's a good question. And uh, I wish only the decision would be in the hands of Donald Trump. But we also know that he is a fantastic businessman. He's a fantastic negotiator. So maybe he will be willing to uh, convince that part of the Republican Party uh, that supports the conflict in Ukraine and supports Ukraine to stop supporting it and finally look at the uh, inner uh, issues inside the country, focus on economic growth, focus on uh, decreasing inflation, decreasing criminality, and increasing education and uh, business growth and uh, health care and so on. Uh, according to my opinion, Trump is not a warmonger. So if he wins on November 5th, he will definitely try to end this uh, Ukraine conflict peacefully and amicably. And Trump has great uh, relations with every country in the world. Under such circumstances, if Trump wins and if Trump tries to end the conflict, so he will definitely uh, want uh, Zelensky also to accept uh, this uh, process. Uh, under that situation, how Zelensky can uh, avoid Donald Trump. I mean, Zelensky is not willing to end the war because this war is one kind of business for him and business for the American military industrial complex. Because uh, I'd like to share with you that all the obsolete weapons uh, from in the US and the EU countries, those are being dumped into Ukraine in the name of military support. They, are, uh, they would have to destroy those weapons instead of destroying, they're sending it to Ukraine. And military industrial complex is making money. American political, Western political elites are making money. Zelensky is making money. So it's a big business for him. But it's a big uh, disaster for the people of Ukraine because they are being making, they're being made a victim of Zelensky's greed, extreme greed. So under such circumstances, if Trump push, puts pressure on Zelensky to end the conflict, because I told that this is not a war for him, it's his business, how he will skip uh, Trump's uh, request? Well, the situation with uh, politics, uh, if we may call what's happening in politics in Ukraine, uh, is uh, also... Uh, not that, uh, you know, uh, clear and straightforward because behind Zelensky, there is a huge uh, team of warmongers who are getting benefits from this conflict. And Zelensky is just a puppet. Uh, he is a puppet of uh, those elites, uh, Ukrainian elites, Western elites, and so on. So to my opinion, uh, he is not the person that makes uh, full decisions. He does look very tired. And I just believe that he can be replaced with another puppet. And that's about it. And I think he knows it. Uh, the biggest question is, will he get out of this uh, situation alive? Or uh, United States particularly will get rid of him because we uh, started observing that it, it became a normal pattern for the U.S. actually remove country's leaders just like that by murdering them. You know that Donald Trump has already survived two assassination attempts. Uh, it meaning that deep state or some unseen elements, they want to finish him. But uh, despite these things, 
Trump's popularity is increasing. <clears throat> and finally, if Trump wins on November 5th, I don't think, I don't believe that the Democrats or those deep states, they will accept it. So under that circumstance, do you think, do you see a possibility of a civil war in the United States? Anything is possible. People are not happy very much about what's happening. Mm -hmm. We shall remember that uh, there are over uh, 58 million uh, registered guns in the United States, in the territory of the United States that belongs to the U.S. citizens. And there are a lot more uh, unregistered weapons. So uh, in this case, uh, it's a possibility. Uh, but um, I believe the only way to avoid this situation is in the United States uh, is to let the fair election happen. Because then people at least will see that their decision is pro executed. But if they will see that uh, nothing can be changed by them, that they're basically power powerless in making those decisions, they, there is the only one way left, you know. And I'm hoping that, that it's not going to happen because uh, the civil war in the United States is going to affect all world anyways, because it's just such a big country, you know, and uh, the part of the uh, your American economy in a global economy is so huge that everyone would feel it. So, um, but I don't believe in the fairness of the deep state. So what we have left is just watch. My final question to you that once this Ukrainian conflict is finished and still because of Zelensky, Ukrainians will be under tax of billions of billions of dollars that Zelensky has received from the United States and the West. So, uh, I mean, for to repay this tax, it's not a gift from the US, it's not a gift from the West, it's all loan and the West will a demand a refund of this loan from the Ukrainian people. So Ukrainian people, I mean, they are already devastated because of this unjust war and because of the greed of Zelensky and his neo-Nazi cohorts. But after this war, uh, how Ukrainian people will be able to repay this huge burden of the loan, billions of dollars? Territories. Uh, because uh, basically every uh, loan is under Ukrainian territories. And uh, uh, I, I, I think I saw somewhere, I read somewhere that there are already uh, um, American complexes are built, you know, on the Ukrainian territory and other countries. So it's a huge question, uh, actually, what will be left from Ukraine after this conflict is over? Because I know Poland, uh, for a long time has, you know, uh, threatened their hands towards some, uh, uh, some Eastern territories of Ukraine, uh, particularly even to some buildings like, uh, theater in Lvov. For, they, they still believe that that belongs to them. So, uh, it, like, it's, it seems, you know, at the current moment, that the West is supporting Ukraine, but actually they're waiting for the moment when they can tear it up for pieces. Uh, Ms. Teradamira, thank you very much for your valuable time and dear viewers. Uh, we will have a next session with Ms. Mira uh, in, in our next uh, episode. We will discuss uh, more about the uh, BRICS uh, Generalist Association and uh, how she has been uh, falling victim of the Western uh, rogue media. Uh, we will discuss everything as well also about the press censorship that is being imposed by the American deep state and the Western countries. Uh, Ms. Mira, thank you so very much for your valuable time. Thank you. Uh, and also we'll be uh, meeting you soon in several minutes.